Okay, we're okay, live. We're live. Hello and welcome to Ochlone Nature Kindergarten, the home of the Virtual Nature School. I'm Claire Warden and I'm delighted to be able to share with you today another film along our inquiry around the idea of rocks and crystals. We're joined today by many people around the world, but also friends who are from Scotland. So we've got friends from Orkney and Irvine and East Kilbride, Kilmarnock. We've got people in Ardrotton and Stirling, so we really are coming in from all over Scotland and all over the world. So hello to those people who are still asleep and who will wake up to this tomorrow morning in Australia and India and China. Very exciting that you're joining us on these lovely provocations. Don't forget, if any part of this journey is of interest, Please do share that with us on the Twitter at V Nature School and we'll pick it up there or do post into our Facebook groups. It's really important that we learn from each other. So without further ado, I have my little ready. I have my selection of little tiny flat rocks. So let's have a look at that film and see what our provocation is today. One of the enjoyable things about doing rocks and crystals is that when we think about all the things we know, it is amazing. I've been looking at all of your photographs and your films that you've been putting up and they are amazing. We have been outside and enjoying ourselves so much. We've got people who've been playing with the water and trying to make the rocks move. People who've been for walks on beaches and done big pieces of artwork. We've been thinking about Japanese gardens and how people all over the world use stone and rock in their art. We've been washing rocks and we've been talking again about dinosaurs and fossilized eggs. Some of those skills that we've been developing have been about choosing, selecting, designing and making. And those are really important things because they've required us to think They've required us to be very careful in the way that we look at rocks. We've been sorting. We've been looking at all of those different colors of sea glass. We've been thinking about the subtlety of white rock and just a gentle color of pink rock and gray rock. So we're making our eyes look very carefully at the stones around us. We've looked at our art materials and organized them into beautiful patterns and shades of color. We've been using tools to recreate the idea of some of those photographs that I showed you. So we've been looking at how we can break up things like shale and slate to make different kinds of installations. We've been exploring patterns by using old tiles and making sure that we fit them together in different ways to make pictures. We've been thinking a lot about the shape of things in our heads. So from the making of a dinosaur to a long line of stones to the presentation of a snail. All of these things have required us to think, to plan, to move things around and in some cases required us to be very careful about how we balance rocks, how we actually make things fit together. So in our talking tub, one of the things I'd like us to think a little bit about is about going up going into a tower. And the challenge that you have is about how tall a tower you could build from stones. Now for the older members of our little community, this raises a challenge because how do you work out how tall the tower is? Are we going to count the number of stones we've used to make the tower? Or are we going to measure it using a tape measure and write down all the different heights that we could get to, to see which person made the tallest tower. Or better still, which is the tallest tower that you've made with your family. So let's think about some of those pictures that we've been taking. Well, I know that people have been out walking and visiting people and Duncan had seen this amazing wall. And when we look at this rock, it's nice and flat. It's fitting together really well to make a wall. There are words that we use around building towers. Things like whether it's shorter or taller than the tower next to it. There's a word called stability or how stable your tower is. And that's whether or not it's wobbly. Is it going to fall over very easily? There's another word in there about balancing. And balancing is where two things come together that just 
sit nicely together. They don't wobble or fall off. And so when you have a very stable tower, it's said to be a very strong tower because it can withstand wobbliness or the wind blowing. If it's not very strong, it blows over very easily. So let's have a think about what we've been doing and how we can take inspiration from each other's. Well, the idea of making a tower came from many of you, but I thought I would share Amelie's photographs. So Amelie went out with her family down beside the river and they started to build these amazing towers. So when you look, there's a very wide stone at the bottom going all the way up to a small stone at the top, because I think there may be a clue there for us when we want to build tall towers. Here is a little teeny weeny tower. And so it's only got very small stones, but it's got a lot of them. They're very smooth, so I think they've been affected by the water that makes them nice and gentle and makes them very balanced when you start to stack them up. Some people use towers and make towers as pieces of art. You have to be careful, however, that you don't break up all of the beautiful habitats for the little insects that live underneath them. So if you are going to take away lots of rock, you should really put them back where you get them from. This is an amazing picture because this is about something that's balanced. It's hard to believe that these stones aren't actually glued together in some way. But it's all about trying to find this place where things fit together, where you can let go and the tower doesn't fall over. If you like being mesmerized by towers, you might want to Google something called Gravity Glue. And that's a group of artists and they go out into the environment and make the most amazing towers. You'd think that they were glued or fixed together with bolts, but they're actually not. It's all about patience, perseverance and finding the balance. You could make some small bridges. You might want to decide to work out how you can balance things together like this. So not only have you got a tower, but you've also got a little bridge underneath. You might like the challenge with your family to make an arched bridge, which is a little bit more difficult. And so this has been made with some help. You're going to have to think about who you can call on to play with, who might help you make a bridge of stones. I've put this in for our friends from Canada who are with us right now. Um, now I'm going to say the word, I think the word is Inushuk, and it's a wayfinder in Canada. And that means that they build up these towers to make them look like almost people. So they have two legs and then they have usually long pieces of stone across the middle. And those two long pieces of stone point the direction of the path. So things that you might find useful for your tower, well, that's easy. You just need lots of stones. But the key part is thinking about what shape of stones you need to collect. Now, we've been thinking an awful lot about different things in this project. And one of the things that you've asked me to do is to explore crystals. So I had lots of little messages from people saying, how do you make crystals? Could I make a crystal? And so we've called on our friend, Thomas, and we've asked his family to create for us a little film to teach us how they made crystals. I'm going to show you how to make crystals. You first start with salt in a cup and then pour them into a jar and then pour them into here and then pour them into here. And then that's how you make crystals. Now you pull it in here a bit. All of them. All the way to the top. Mom, can you please add one cup of boiling water? What happens when there's hot water? Dissolves. Start to melt. Can you give it a good stir? Yeah, so we don't see any salts. Go now. We're going to add some red food coloring 
to our salt and um, sugar. And we're going to do both colours of these. Blue and red. That's enough. Let's stir that all up. on that right now. I'm not sure what's happened with the film, um, but Bravo and his team will be working on that, I am sure. All right, so I'm not sure what's happened with the film. So we can always leave that right now and leave the team to sort that out. The important thing about all of that is we're almost at the end of it because what we were doing was looking at the idea of crystals. And what froze up our film there was my lovely friend, Thomas, who is telling us about the fact that we can get boiling water and put something in it. Now, the thing he said was something called Epsom salts, which isn't commonly available, but you can also have a go at using salt and you can also have a go at using sugar. And when you dissolve those into that really hot water, you want to get yourself a stick um, or a pencil and tie a bit of string to it and put it in the jam jar with that solution and then leave it somewhere so that it can create for you a crystal that will hang on that string. So. Today, it's about building towers. It's about thinking about stability. It's about starting to build that crystal that we've just talked to you a little bit about. So let's have a chance to open up and see. I know that I've got a few friends online. Sky is here to talk to us. So let's go to Sky and see if Sky and her family have any ideas about what they might want to do today. Hi, Sky. How are you? Uh, um, I'm fine. I I always going to make a tower, which is kind of cool. And even I have something special for you. Oh my word, look at that beautiful stone that you it's have decorated. Very, it's very, very, very pretty. It's very smooth and we keep it in our house and it's a kind of rainbow order. And it's a rainbow on it as well. That was beautifully made. And I can see from the way that you're holding it that really? actually you love the shape. It's very smooth, isn't it? And it's, a, it's really like kind of oval. It's a rainbow oval shape. Because mm -hmm. yesterday I painted, not today, because I didn't want to. I want to do it. Just today, that's why I did it. Yeah, well, that's good that you did it yesterday because yesterday was a very wet day, wasn't it? We had lots of rain yesterday. So that's a good idea that you spent time doing your painting. And, and, and even I always, always, always love painting. <coughs> Is that the thing you love to do? That's great. So today, Sky, we're going to try. So this is my little board. I got a board like this. And I've got some little stones and I'm going to try to see if I can make a tower. Do you have any lovely stones in your box? Ah, that are flat. That's a good stone. That's this good. This one is flat too. Very okay. good. Let's see if you can stack those up then. Well done. That's How many have you got in your tower? Three. Yeah, I've got four in that one, but it's very wobbly. And this well, one... this one's really, really tiny. So... Oh, yes. Can oh, you put that on top? Put it on top? Okay. Put a tiny one on top. Okay. I think this one. 
Oh, well done. Now you're up to four. Brilliant. Two, three, four. Let's go. Cool. Right. Maybe another one. Oh, <laughs> and then it falls down. That's what happens to mine all the time. I build them up and then they wobble over and I start all over again. So it's a good game to play to see who in your family can build the tallest tower. That's a beautiful one. It's like a flag. It's, it's like a dolphin nose and eyes there. That's so funny. <laughs> it could be any of those things, couldn't it? Very good. So um, what's the weather like with you today, Sky? Will you go out for a walk, do you think? Today? It's cool. Is it cloudy? But... Sunny, is it raining? What's it like where you are? It's not raining, yeah. It's cloudy. Cloudy today, but not too wet. She does. She does. Oh, now I can see it. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Thank you for showing me your four rocks. Yeah. So let's. It's a cute little tower. It's so it's cute. And I'm going to put some more pieces. Okay. Uh, well, oh. Again. <laughs> and we'll angle it down. Very good. So that's going to be your challenge today, Sky, to see how many rocks you can get in that great big tall tower. And let's see if anybody's got any ideas on our chat to see what we think we might have a go at doing. I know there's a group who are going off to Colburn. They're taking Ben for a walk, um, which will be great. And they're going to try and build a tower when they're up there. So let's see who else has got ideas of things that they might want to do outside with their idea of balance and stability. Just pop something into my chat box so we can find out what you're up to today. All right. So I know I can see Wendy's house, who've got a, a, a comment up there, and it's saying, good morning to the Virtual Nature School family from Wendy's house. So hello to everybody at Wendy's house. Um, they're always so very, very busy. And if you remember, Wendy's house had that amazing rock collection with all those different compartments with all their different types of rock in. So I'm pretty sure that they're going to have a good variety of rocks to be able to look at those flatter rocks, which will give them really tall towers. Sean's there and she's gonna be going to the beach. They're going to stack some stones um, from Orla. So Orla said that, so that's great. So going to the beach is a lovely place, but do you remember what I was saying about just doing a few stones and making sure that you have the ones that are more on the top of the pile, because if you have those, it's, more, um, it's less likely that they're going to be a habitat for the insects. Um, all right, so Ewan's going to have a go at making crystals. Fantastic. Lots of YouTube clips all about how to make crystals. And it'd be really interesting for you, Ewan, to maybe do a little bit more scientific research around the right location. So do you put your crystal on a windowsill? Does it go in a hot cupboard, like an airing cupboard near the cooker? So will it make a difference about the temperature or the amount of sunlight that the solution gets in terms of making your crystal? Kirsten's going to be at work, but he's looking forward to building towers that they've collected from various beaches that we visited on their holiday to Dorset last week. So that's great, Kirsten. Enjoy that process. That's going to be really good. Um, I do love looking at rocks, as we've talked about many times before. Um, but when you start to build towers, you begin to realize that, that even on the simplest, smallest rock, there are these things called the faces, and they're the smooth aspect of your rock and then there are the things called the edges and the edges of this bit but often what we think is a flat rock has sometimes got an indentation or a break point in it so although you think it's flat this little pivot point here is going to make this quite a tricky stone to use in the tower unlike this one which is pretty much flat all right i'm going to leave you with that little challenge today um we're going to have a little look. Louise is going to be sharing some of her ideas because they're walking to the windmill farm and having a look at rocks up there. So I look forward to hearing some more of your ideas. And don't forget, keep in touch through Twitter, 
the nature school and through the facebook groups i'll look forward to seeing you soon take care everybody bye bye